show. But that's probably the best way. Um, yeah, just throw that around. <clears throat> I'll grab that. Uh, so the the big the biggest thing that I'm seeing here uh, with most most of the people that well yeah, most of the people I'll say that that where the, the, the focus of this conversation, uh, Dan, Dan, can you get Angelina? <coughs> so, and I'm just, I'm just pulling out random things here. This is not targeting anybody, um, but I, I can say this collectively as a whole. So, and I feel very confident that I can do that. Um, so what, what, what we're talking about today is productivity. All right, and uh, you know the you know I've gone through some of the lead cues, and um, you know the the thing is that if you're if we're truly following uh, the science, uh, you're going to be extremely successful, and you're seeing that with now that the new people that come in they're outperforming people that have been here previously uh, because they're listening and they're implementing. Going back to uh, you know, some of the golden rules, which is listening, implementation, awareness, and adaptation. Okay? So, um, but you need to be really focused on your goals and, and why you're here. And you have to have a lot of energy, a lot of drive inside of you uh, for success. Okay? So, um, what, what I'm seeing a lot of is just like very, um, and, you know, James said this the other day, complacency. There's, there's too much. There's too much complacency. Okay, do you guys know what complacency? Means? Who knows what complacency means? Does anybody know what that word means? Comfortable. Huh? Too yep. comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you know, if you get if you get <coughs> comfortable in life, you're gonna get run over. You know, you're gonna stay down and be the little guy in life. All right. You know, pressure pressure is good if you know how to use pressure. All right, and a lot of things that maybe we weren't raised that way, um, but you look at, you know, whenever, and you look at it in any, in any craft, any, anything that you, you guys remember like Bloodsport, the movie, <laughs> when they, they, they put him on the tree and they stretch his legs and they put him through all that training and he becomes, he becomes the best, you know, and yes, um, a lot of us couldn't handle that. We couldn't even handle one day with that Shidoshi. So, but he was able to go through that and take that pain. And so, um, you, we all have that in our different areas. Like trying to get into Harvard, be a lot of pressure. But look what you become. You become Jamie Dimon. You become a billionaire and the CEO of one of the best companies in the world. So, you know, the thing here is that, um, you know, you need to learn how to embrace the pressure so you can become successful and um, you know some of you guys are not going to be able to do that and so and we're just going to have to part ways okay and that's fine doesn't mean I don't like you it just means that I'm running a business and I have to make sure that those things work in a certain way with the math because the math doesn't work like we talked about earlier in the week if I'm giving you this and you're bringing me back you know this there's a certain there's a certain ratio five to one and that has to be in alignment at all times. If it's not, for if it goes out of line for too long, I have to me as the, as the, um, you know, the father, the paternal overseer of this, to have to make sure it's like your kids. If your kid goes to bed at eleven o'clock at night, he's going to have a problem for school the next day, right? If the kid's going outside, sneaking out the window, and going drinking, he's going to have your your child's going to have a problem, right? If he doesn't do the homework, what's the future? If he's playing on the games all the time, what's the future? If some of you guys have children here. So there, there's things here that um, I have to make sure that are, that are actually happening too. So this is just an example um, right here where these are leads, um, you know, over 100 leads that have no action in several months or they haven't been converted. And that's one of the, you know, biggest things that I talk about 
is that you have you have 10 days once you get a lead to either get it pre-approved or it goes to nurture. And if you're new, you don't you don't get to put a lead in nurture unless I approve it. Cuz you don't know what nurture is. Okay? So if you have leads in all these other statuses, I don't care if you what you say that you talked to them, you adjusted it, they don't qualify. I don't believe anything you tell me because I go off of this. And I see how many loans you close relative to the leads you got compared to what I would do with those statistics and know that there's a huge, there's a huge variance. There's a huge, you know, that dichotomy. And so, you know, this, this is, for an example, this many leads that haven't been converted, they've been talked to a couple times and there hasn't been any conversion. You see, you got to think about what happens when, when, when we operate like that. Okay. So the loan officer loses money. The processor loses money, right? Uh, the management loses money, the, and the company loses money. Everybody loses, right? And then, and then you know, when at New Year's or New Year's Eve, we're saying we're not happy because we don't have enough money. Or like we're looking around and see where's the money? Where's the money? Why is my life like this? And it's because of this, you know. This would have been an extra at least five thousand in commissions to the loan officer if you would have worked this. At least five thousand, maybe ten thousand. Okay, but you're never going to see that if you don't change. If you don't change your mindset about how to convert leads, like we talked about with Dan Gilbert, and uh, and the tone, and being excited, uh, then you're going to have a problem life okay so this is a huge this is a huge missed opportunity for the bank uh, for the processors for the loan officer for everybody and and so that's that's what I'm saying about misprioritizing the time and let me just give you an example so and this is, has to do with controlling your focus right do you need to go have a one hour two hour one and a half hours lunch at Buffalo Wild Wings or do you need to call this queue what do you guys think? It's cool. What do you think? Should I go have a lunch over there, or do I need to get on this? Get on there. Okay. But if there's something wrong in the brain, if I'm going to go do that, I see this is here. You see? That doesn't make sense, right? How come you can go have a lunch, the boss man doesn't have a lunch leave, and, and there's a problem over here? See, it's misprioritizing, misalignment, because the values are not in alignment. See, your values, when you're doing that, you're saying that you value to go have that lunch, which generates no money. It's one of the things Grant Carlin says, don't ever eat lunch with coworkers. Only you eat lunch with people you can make money off of. So there's no value to that. What's the value in that? Okay, once in a while is okay, but, you know, that's that should be after your base is taken care of. You see? So I'm just saying that, you know, you guys want to have help with guidance and, and wealth creation. That's what, the, that's what it is. It's, it's doing things differently. Okay? Uh, you know, and yes, I understand we all came from humble upbringings and uh, different things, but if you don't change, uh, you're never going to have what you want. Okay. You you guys, if you don't understand this, you never, you're never going to get there, man. You know. So you got, you got to take care of your, of your, of your base, your bottom line. All right. I'm not saying that it's bad to go have lunch. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I go to very nice places every single week, but not until my bottom line is taken care of. Okay. Whatever your bottom line is. Uh, for you guys in sales, uh, that's getting deals in. You know, so you, I mean, you know, I don't know any rich person that is going fooling around and their shit's all messed up, or, or I promise you that wealth will leave them. Okay, so if you're if you're given if you're given leads, you need to you need to convert them. 
All right, and you need to be happy about it because you're getting paid very well compared to the industry standard uh, to, to do that, okay? So I want to make sure you guys understand how, again, what we talked about. When you come here in the morning, what you're going to do first, you're going to call through your leads uninterrupted, all right? Does everyone remember what we, how we do it? How do we do it, Chris? We start off uh, <coughs> the morning till about 12, getting all our uh, prospects and uh, touching base. And uh, from about 12 to 5, we'll you know work the apps that we did receive or any of the uh, other processing things that we need to do to qualify borrowers. And then from you know 5 till the end of the day, we'll uh, we'll follow back up with our uh, pre-qualified mm -hmm. and all the other uh, missed calls that we need to start making. Okay. Um, right. So, and does does there does anyone disagree with that? I mean, I have a question. That science with you leads, how you say, um, just touch base with them and then tell them, hey, I'm gonna call you back later. Wouldn't it be just best to just go ahead and do a quick application on the phone because you already have them on the phone, whereas you might not get them on the phone again. So just go ahead and do a quick application. Well, yeah, the, the thing is that the, so what you're doing in that first initial call is you're letting them know that, so remember one of the things going back to what what I've taught at Mortgage University and what uh, Quick and you know, Dan Gilbert say is speed. The velocity of leads that you're getting, you can't do a 45 minute call with somebody. Because you're, you're not fast enough to get through that stack. All right, so, and we can see that because what's happened is that your uh, application, your attrition rate is very high, which means that the, a lot of apps are dying because you're not getting to that bottom stack now. Okay, so you don't know what's going to be what right now. Okay, I'm juggling. I don't know what's what right now. So it's about happy greeting. Hey, give me your documents. Put a little bit back on them. I'm going to get you pre-approved, we're going to get you the house, everything, and just give me those things, and I'm going to get this done within 24 hours. Okay? So, and then, what you're going to do, you'll allow, that'll allow you to go through the whole stack, and then the next day you can circle around, hey, just checking in with you, you know, rates are looking really good right now, that grant's getting ready to expire, how are those documents coming along? You're doing that the next day. And I promise you that the, it's not about, uh, here, what you're trying to do is that the tapping with them, okay? If you just do, like, for example, here's what you guys are doing. You're spending 30, 40 minutes on one app, and then you get tired, and then you have a two-hour lunch, and then you, you know, and then you get, you don't want to work, and then you come back, and you can't get to the rest of them. But you can't, you can't work like that, man. You have to go through the whole thing and see, let me, let me sift through this. Let me see what's what, Okay? And then um, uh, you'll, what will happen is as you're sifting through this, you're going to find out what's the loans and what's not. Okay? Because you don't know, like, once you shake through it, like, we had a guy that has good credit, but he wants a mobile home. Well, I spent 45 minutes with him on the phone taking his app, but now he doesn't want to do a loan with me because he wants a mobile home. He thinks he can get, your, you know, USDA zero down with that. It's not possible, so he's pissed off now. So we lost all that time unless he changes his mind to go buy a house or comes up with a three and a half for FHA. So you don't see, you see, you don't know how that's going to unfold because in his mind he thought he was buying single family because the Zill listing said single family, but below it it says double wide. Okay, so you lose that time now. If you would have just spent five minutes with him, get his docs pre-approved and let him go, and then just keep tapping him, that's much more efficient with your time. All right, because that's how you're going to close a lot. You can't close 30 loans a month uh, and spend that because you don't have the time to do that. Okay, so that's that's the reasoning behind that, why we why we do it like that. And so your your product and your brand is really doing a lot of the selling for you. So you, the trust is almost won over. You see, the product and the brand is going to help win the trust. So you don't need it. People that spend two hours on a call because the customer doesn't trust them, or it's a bad product. If you have a very good product and you have a very good brand, that's why Quicken, the people they pay, 
above above, above market because of the brand. You know that their rates are about half a point higher than ours, but people still pay it because the brand is so strong. So that's the that's the thing that you know. You know I'm not doing this to lecture you guys, man. I'm trying to help you guys out, but you got you're gonna have to adapt and change here if you want if you want to be successful. All right, and I mean, it's, you know, I, you know. Uh, some of you guys, man, closing two loans, three loans, man, and just you know, in a month, uh, it's it's not, that's not success. Okay, that that makes me upset. It really does. All right, if you if you've been in this game for a long time, um, you know, or you you're working under me directly, that it's this is it's not good. There's no reason for it. These people are calling all day for a loan, man. So the point is, though, if you're not following up, like Chris talked about, and you're letting your leads sit in there, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to have a, you're going to, you're hurt, you're, everyone loses. Your family loses, all right? Because, see, now, I mean, I look at this, stop and think about that for a second. Look, truly, that's at least an extra 5000 that that loan officer could have had an income for 2017. 2018. Okay, and what do we wake up every morning? All of the, all of us as human beings, there's usually five things that we wake up in the morning and want more, or what we want. It's either love or happiness, money, right, or status. All of us when we wake up in the morning, we're looking for food. Those are the main things that when we wake up, what we look for. So that means it's very very important that money is very, very important in your life, all right, and status, right? So this is going to help you cover a lot of those, those pillars that you want. You don't wake up in the morning and say, you know, I want this rock. You know, you wake up in the morning, you're looking for money. You're looking for a vacation. You're looking for a house. You're looking for food, okay? So I'm trying to show you the way on how to get that money. Because you, everyone, all of us, all of us have those same needs: money, food, status, shelter, and and love. So, this is the this one right here. The money piece will give you two or three of those already. Okay. Um, so, you know, the thing is that again, uh, we can't. What I'm trying to tell you guys that uh, we can't allow this to happen, uh, and I won't allow it to happen. All right, you need to make sure that you're you're converting your leads, and we're gonna sit down today and for the next few days go through your cues to make sure you're converting these applications, uh, because there's no reason why um, that we're missing out on opportunities. All right, so um, is anyone confused about what I'm talking about? Does you guys, you guys get what I'm saying? You guys, you know. I'm getting like a lot of some I can sense that some people are with me and some people that they're uh, they're not they're, they're not in so uh, you guys need to tell me because you know I, I you guys uh, how you really feel about it is anyone confused or well I know you're new so you're not gonna you know, some of this is probably, um, some of this might be, you know, some of the things that we're talking about may not make a lot of sense right now, but some, you know, the, the basic things as far as how to, how to work your productivity, the productivity has got to come way up. All right. Again, it's just too complacent and you got to, you got to get excited for your life, man. Okay, and what and that's you know what does that mean that when you're talking to these customers you need to be, uh, you know, there should never be a bad word that comes out of your mouth to the customer because you're talking to your money. You know, you should be happy. I don't care what they tell you to go fuck yourself. You know, so you should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Because it's your, it's your it's your money. Okay, like you don't realize that but you think that if you're gonna go tell the customer something nasty, and what do I mean? No, I can't do that for you. No, you can't do USDA. You have to learn how to how to change your talking. 
That, this is this this leads to that right there, right? That this leads to if you're. Um, but the, the the main thing here also again is going back to the focus and misprioritizing the values, misweighting. A lot of human beings and there is a bias that we have in the mind. It's called the misweighting bias, or you misweight what needs. And you see this all the time. And I, I think I we have a. I've talked about it many times. Don't walk over the dollars to get to the to the dimes. Okay, don't walk over the dollars to get to the dimes in life. That's a misweighting bias. You guys understand what that means? I told you the story about the secretary that used to work for me, and she doesn't work for me anymore because of the misweighting bias. Okay, you go get donuts, you need to go get money first. You know, you, you know, you guys understand what I'm talking about. That this is a very this is this thing is so powerful that you can take this. It's a universal truth. That if you get that right in your life and you focus on the priorities first, uh, which is your revenue, your money, and your health, um, the, all the other stuff will start to come together. Okay, but you know the the thing is that um, again. I don't want to see that you guys are uh, not converting your business because there's there's a lot of leads and I can hook you up and you know life can be very beautiful and we can build you a huge team around you, but not if you're not if you're operating like this. Okay, yeah, I can't I can't allocate money towards you and give you processors and employees and teams if you're closing two or three loans a month. That's not that's not good. That's not a good number. Come to me when you close ten loans a month. Uh, and I can I can change your world for you big time. Okay, because the the amount of leads that come in that should be uh, and the products that we offer, uh, you know, when I started the business, all I did was refi cash out, no purchase, none of the, none of the stuff you guys do, just refi cash out. That's all I did, and I closed twenty loans a month. Okay. Um, I didn't have any. I didn't even know what FHA was until 2008, and I started the business in 2005. Okay, I didn't do USDA until 2011. Start with one program. You guys have 50 programs, and you're doing two loans a month. I mean, that you know that there's that's telling me there's something wrong inside of you. Okay, or or you're fanning deals out the back door that I'll, that I'll find that out if you are. And that's that's immediate termination. If I find out you're selling my stuff to someone else or uh, fanning out to somebody, that's uh, that's immediate termination. So it's either one or the other. It's either you don't you're not you know your mind somewhere else or you're you're selling my stuff. And so um, you know, but there should be and, and again, some of you guys are doing really well and you're and you're new, and I can see a very there's a few people here so far. Uh, you guys have a very bright future in the business, and I'm going to help you to get to the, you know, to where you want to go. But you have to listen. And again, I'm not lecturing you. I'm trying to help you to get. If you look at where some of you guys were a month ago and where you are now, uh, you're probably much better off as a producer, right? So um, the industry has huge upside. There's a lot of opportunity, um, but we got to make sure that when we're giving leads that we 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 exert that energy to to convert them. Okay. So um, so again, when you go back to the the schedule, the optimal schedule. You know, you have your new applications, your new leads. You're going to call through those first. Now, here's the thing. At some point, you are going to spend more time with the customer, and and you're going to have to do that. If it's a good loan, you know. You're gonna spend maybe 10, 15 minutes with them. It's a good loan, right? So it's like you have the guy last night um, that wants to do the uh, gift of equity with his mom, and it sounds like it's a good deal. You know, then you know you're gonna spend a few more minutes with him, talking with him to get his docs in and get him pre-approved. I'm not saying to hurry up and rush to get him off the phone. We now we see there's a deal there, and he's got documents to you. You look at the credits, all starting to come together. It makes sense, right? But you know, we had somebody the other day 
So I spent 30 minutes on a phone call, and the guy had a 495 credit. And I'm like, you know, you just wasted that time, man. You know, this guy's talking about going under contract to get a house. What are you, what are you talking about that for? He's not going under contract right now. Okay. So, you see, and so the thing is that, or, or the documents, they don't drive, right? So, you, you have to find that out initially before we can spend all this time with somebody. Um, so, you're doing that from 9 to 12. It's calling through your stuff, and then 12 to 5, processing that, right? It's like if you're a hunter, if some of you guys hunt, from 9 to 12, you're out there hunting, right? You're not cleaning the deer at, at 9 a.m. Nobody's doing that, okay? You're going, let me see where's his foot tracks, where did he, you know, let me put some bait over here, and you're going to try and find them. Okay, and then after you get the deer, some of them have ringworm, so I'm going to get those out of the way. It has, I shot five of them, this one's bad, I can't eat that one, throw it away, and I'm going to take these other ones, right? And then at five o'clock, I'm going to cook oh, everything. You guys, you see what I'm saying, the analogy? I mean, you know, you have to think similar to that because if you do it in the opposite and you start doing 12 to 5 of the cleaning and you're cleaning a deer that's going to kill you if you eat it. I'm just telling you, man. I mean, I don't know how else to, how else to explain it to you. I mean, you know, so, and I think everyone here at this point knows if when they're talking to somebody, uh, if the deal kind of, if, the, if it kind of makes sense, right, if it jives. This guy right here that came in today, the veteran, you know, that's a good one. You got to, actually, he's going to go, we're going to need to broadcast that guy because he's been denied by all the lenders. He lives right behind us, making 80 k a year, and uh, is a VA recruiter. That's the best you can get. So, and he wants to buy right there. So, you know, that guy, you know, he needs, he, that's, a, that's a good lead. You know, yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's basically what I want to talk to you guys about. Do we have the, the takeaways here? Leave no good viable lead unturned, right? Follow the schedule, and the the contract. Some of you guys contracts are pouring in because you're you're doing it. You're you're listening. You're following the system, and some of you guys you couldn't get a contract to save your life. You know, so don't listen. Here's the one thing. Remember this. Listen to the people that, that are successful. Even if your buddy's over here working with you and he's no bueno, don't listen, man. Because you're going to be like him. Okay? You got to remember one thing that, this is one good thing that my dad told me when I was a kid. And I always remember this. He says, Angelo, be careful who you listen to careful who you listen to okay because you don't listen to somebody that doesn't isn't an expert in that area because you're going to end up being like them if you listen to them they they don't know like for example on mortgage you know you have to listen to somebody that knows about that now, if you ask me about a car, I don't know anything about a car. So don't ask me how to fix a carburetor. I don't even know where the carburetor's at. I don't know. I've never even, I have this truck. I've never even opened the hood. Never one time. I, I never, I don't know where, what's, I don't know where the engine is. I mean, so don't ask me about that because I don't know. But if you ask me about mortgage, I can tell you about that. You see what I'm saying? Or I can tell you about sales because I know about it. So I'm just saying that, you know, if your buddy's telling you, hey, go call the lead this way or, oh, hey, don't, don't call the app penny, don't listen to Angelo, just think about what, that, what, what just happened right there. Then you're going to go like him, and you see his numbers. You know, he doesn't have good numbers, don't listen. Because you're going to end up, your fate is going to be like his. And you're not going to, now if he's, if he's on the top, then you can listen to him. You know, if he's on the top, uh, then, then, you should, then you can listen. You know, and that goes for anything and in life. You know, whatever whatever you're uh, trying to do, um, you know, but the, 
thing is that, you know, like I said, in the end, I mean, life can be, you know, so good. It can be so beautiful and you can make great things happen. Um, you know, if you, if you truly surrender and you truly add value. You know, you guys ever heard that there's a story about the, the, uh, the rich guy and he had three, he had three servants and he gave each one of them five pieces of gold. Have you guys heard that story? I think, have you all ever heard that story? Uh, I remember yeah. So there was a king and he had three <laughs> servants and he gave each one five pieces of gold. And he says, you guys, I want you to manage this for me, take care of it and come back in a year. And we're going to see, you know, how everything goes. So, anyway, so he gives the three guys each five pieces of gold. And, and a year later passes, and they're, they're before him. He's sitting at his throne. And he says, well, you know, you number one, what did you do with the five pieces of gold? And he says, well, I spent it all. I had a great time. You know? And the second guy... They asked them, what did you do with the five pieces of gold? He's like, well, I was real smart. And what I did is I took the five pieces and I buried them right here. And so that way no one could find them. I hid the money. Okay. And then the, the third guy, um, he said, well, you know, what I did is I opened up a little stand to sell fruit and vegetables. And I did that. I bought one horse. And, and now I turn the five pieces to 30 pieces of gold. Okay. And the king said, congratulations. That was, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. You, the first servant, you're going to be beheaded. And you're going to get in, in all of your gold that you lost. I want everyone to learn as a lesson. That this was a foolish man. And you, sir, with the second, that you buried that gold, you're going to give that to him, to the, to the man with the, uh, the third man the 30 pieces of gold and you're going to be dethroned from this kingdom you can never come back okay and the third person ended up becoming the, the king to that kingdom okay this is this is in the bible i didn't come up with the story so and it's analogous to to what we anything in life really that you know um going back to the you know the belief and actually, this is an objective, it's a principle, really, that, um, you know, people people are only going to invest in people that uh, are worth investing in. Okay? So, no one's going to back you or invest in you if you're not, um, if, you, if, the, if the give to take ratio, if the return is not there. Okay? So, you guys have to, you have to understand that about life. Because it doesn't matter whether you're here or any other company or even even if you have relationships with people, you don't think that some of you guys that are together with people that if you are not giving something back to them, they're not checking that they're not they're not checking that that um, that ratio to make sure that it's in alignment. You're married, you're married, or some of you guys are married, some of you guys have spouses. Um, I know for me it is. So what I'm saying is that. For example, if you don't produce enough, you don't bring enough income into the house, there could be a problem in your house, right? Yeah. Same like my house. My wife has a certain expectation that, or we're out of, we have a problem, we're out of alignment. So that happens, all, that's all throughout civilization. It's not just in this office. I mean, you know, it's everywhere. Like your wife has expectations for you, hey, you need to do these things. You need to get me into a house in 2018 or go sleep on the couch, buddy. So, you know, and, um, and, and, and all of us have that. And so I'm just saying that if you rise to the occasion like the third servant, you can have the key to the city. That's what I'm trying to tell you, okay? But you can't have the key to the city unless you deserve it. You have to do something to, in order to deserve it is what I'm, what I'm saying, okay? So that's really the, the, main, the main takeaway, um, that I think that is, is very important. And we all we all have to get better. I have to get a lot better. You know, but um, I promise you that if you guys truly follow the system and you're bringing in a lot of loans, uh, you're going to be, your, your whole life is going to change. But, you know, you, you have to, you have to change first internally. So, 
Okay, so I don't want to see this anymore, guys. I mean, really, I want you to go through your queues, convert as many apps as you can, but but do it in a happy spirit. Don't do it because of fear, because you're you're getting closer to your dream, your goal. You know, don't do it because Angelo said so. Do it because I can I can see my vision, my future. That hey, I can get this money and I can do something good with my life, and I'm helping people. You know. Don't do it because you're scared. You know, do it because you want to do it because you want to you want to serve and you want to, you know, add value to a society. You know, but you're gonna have to have energy. You're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to move. Okay, all right. And if you do that, then you're gonna you're gonna do really well. So anyway, that's enough talking. So thank you.